Howdy and welcome back. In the last episode, we finished out the signup page. We now want to take that information and allow users to log in, better known as user authentication. So far, we've created one Angular module for the signup page connected to our sales API. And this is under a broader category of public pages, or those pages that don't require a user to be logged in to see them. We also need a home page that will also be public. Finally, we need a view, I'm going to call the dashboard, that will require that the user be logged in to our back end. So we have three Angular modules for Activity Overlord version 2.0. You can, of course, accomplish the same result in a variety of different ways, but I've chosen this approach for simplicity and ease of SEO. Okay, let's begin with the home page. We'll first replace the current markup in homepage.ejs within the Views folder with this new markup. The new markup contains our top-level navigation, which includes the sign in button that triggers a put request to slash login, as well as a sign up button that triggers a get request to slash sign up. Now, I realize I'm going through this stuff pretty fast, but don't despair. I have a repo that has all of the code for your review. Let's look at the Angular module and controller for the home page. The home page module and the sign up module are identical, both inject the toaster and compare to services. The homepage controller adds a new method to the scope called submit login form. Similar to the sign up form, submit login form initially sets the loading state to true. We then make a put request to slash login, passing in an email field as well as a password field from the scope object. If the request is successful, we'll make the equivalent of the get request to slash. If we're unsuccessful, We'll handle the known errors, in this case a bad email password combination, through the toaster service and return. We'll also handle any unexpected error here. Finally, in either case, we'll toggle the login form loading state back to false. So now that we have the front end set up for the home page, let's switch gears to the back end sales API. The first thing I want to do is handle the put request to slash login. So I'll add the route to the routes.js file here. We want this to trigger a login action in our user controller. Next, we'll head over to the user controller in usercontroller.js. So let's add the login action here. The next block of code I'll add first takes the email address that was passed from the login form and searches our user model for an existing user through the find one method. If it doesn't find one, We'll send back a 404 status, which will trigger the toaster message in the front end homepage controller. Next, we'll be using another machine pack, this one called machine pack passwords. Within the machine pack, we'll use the check password machine, passing in the user provided password from the login form, as well as the encrypted password found by the find one method of our user model. Within this machine, we handle any unexpected error first, and then if the passwords don't match, we again send a 404 status via res not found. For reference, these responses can be found in the responses folder here. If we get a match, we need to log the user in, so we'll create a new parameter on the session via rec.session.me and give it the value of the ID of the user we found earlier with the find one method of the user model. The last thing we need to do is let the front end know everything went well, and we do that by returning with res.ok. Okay. Let's see all of this in action. I'll start sales with sales lift, and we've got an issue here, and I know what it is because I'm old and forgetful. So I'm gonna go into the routes.js file, and you'll see I just missed a comma here. So let's go back and try that again. Okay, sales is up and running. Let's go to the browser. And let's hit localhost 1337. Okay, so the reason we're getting a 404 not found is we don't have a route that handles a get request to slash. Now we could remedy this very quickly by going back to the routes.js file and we'll create a route here 
that handles a get request to slash which will trigger the home page and we'll restart sales here go back into the browser and refresh and there's our home page and that's great but what I really want is a way to marshal between whether a user is authenticated that is logged in and if they're logged in I want to display one front end and if they're not logged in a different front end and I can do that by adding a page controller to sales so let's do that first I'll add the controller via sales generate controller page now let's go back into Adam and we have our page controller here it's empty but I'm going to add an action here show home page so we first check if a user is logged in via the me parameter on the session so if rec.session.me does not exist I want to load the home page and I'm going to do that by returning res.view.homepage otherwise if the user is logged in I'm going to use the find one method of the user model to look for that user so I'll pass in the user ID which is the value of the me parameter on the session first I'll look for an unexpected error here and I'll handle that with res.negotiate if it exists if I don't find a user I'm going to return the user to the home page now if I do find a user I'm gonna return a view that we haven't created yet called dashboard I'm gonna bootstrap some information that I found via the find one method of the user model on the page itself before we create the dashboard view you may be asking what's going to trigger this show home page action well we're going to do that by going into routes.js and substituting this current view with our page controller and our page controller action show home page so now anytime there's a get request to slash our page controller will marshal which front end the user receives now let's implement our dashboard page the markup for the dashboard page is straightforward as with the sign up and home page views the dashboard view will have some top level navigation the part I want to concentrate on is the bootstrap data we get from the page controllers show home page action so using EJS will add the parameters of the me object from the show home page action onto windows.sales underscore locals next let's add the very minimal dashboard module and controller I've added these files under a separate folder named private to distinguish between the angular code that will be executed when a user is authenticated and code that is public and does not require authentication I want to ensure that the new angular modules I've added will be loaded before any controllers so I'll go back to pipeline.js found in the task folder and add the path to the two new modules homepage module and dashboard module this will ensure that the modules will be loaded into the page first okay let's see this all in action so I'll start sales with sales to lift and then navigate my browser to localhost 1337 in the previous episode we created an account Nicola at Tesla with the password 123456 and I'm going to use that now now if you don't have that user created no big deal just click on the sign up now button and create that user Nicola at Tesla.com with the password 123456 then go back to localhost 1337 and start from there and we have our dashboard page and if we view the page source we can see that we have our bootstrap user right here on the page so let's go back and look at the page controller really quickly here reg.session.me existed we use that with the find one method of the user model it found the user and then pass the user object via the me parameter 
and bootstrapped it onto the dashboard page. So there's a couple of things that we still need to implement here. We have this sign out link that if I click on it, it's going to give us a 404. And that's because we don't have a route that handles that link. So this link is making a get request to slash logout and we don't have a route for that. So let's take care of that first. So now that get request to slash logout will be tied to or will trigger the user controller and this new action on the controller. So let's go up to user controller and let's add a logout action. So similar to our login action, we're going to look for the user ID on rec.session.me. We're going to pass that to the find one method of our user model. We're going to handle the errors if they exist. And if it finds a user, we're going to essentially log that user out by making rec.session.me equal to null. Then we're going to return with a response, uh, a new response called back to home page. So let's take a look at that response. So this response is basically for convenience. If logout were a Ajax request, sales will know that that request just wants a status code response. In our case, we're making a get request via the browser. So we just want to redirect back to slash and let our page controller handle it. Okay, let's see this in action. So I'll go and restart sales. And we'll go back and log in. So now when I hit the sign out link, the page controller sends me back to the home page. Okay, there's just a couple of other things we need to do. Within the user controller and the sign up action, we want the user to be logged in after they're signed up. So we'll do that right here. And within the sign up page controller, on a successful sign up, we made a get request via the browser to slash user. And now we just want to make that slash. Let's go ahead and restart one more time. And we'll now go to sign up and I'll create a new user B, B at B.com. And everything works. So the user is created and logged in and let's take a look at the page source. And there we are. There's our bootstrap data. Thanks for making it through the many voices of this salescast. Although it might seem that there are different URLs on the salescast, I assure you that it was the same old guy throughout, albeit allergy challenged. Anyway, we now know how to create a user, save it to a database using the sales arm, and then use that information to authenticate the user, marshalling between different Angular front ends depending upon the user's login status. Also, there's been quite a bit going on in the sales and tree line community, so expect an update shortly via the SalesCast mailing list. If you're not signed up, head over here to subscribe, and you can follow me on Twitter here. As always, thanks for watching.